Well, hello again, everyone. It's uh, about one o'clock, so I think I'm going to get started today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, thanks for watching my YouTube channel. And I uh, want to talk to you just a minute about the painting we're going to do today. Uh, I have a, a photograph of a scene from Mexico. I'm not sure exactly where it is, but uh, uh, it's sort of an ugly photo, I guess I would call it. Um, it's not one I took, but it's one I bought. And uh, so I uh, have the rights to paint it and to show you how to paint it. And we're going to see if we can make something a little nicer than this scene out of it. Um, I have drawn a grid there for you. Uh, I have a sketch showing you that in a second. Here we go. And uh, so it's... Um, like I said, it's not a very pretty scene. We're going to see if we can brighten it up a little bit and uh, give it some uh, character and give it some color and uh, clean up some of the buildings, make them look like they're not quite so old. Um, I think I have solved my audio problem. If you followed me last month, you know I had a pretty bad audio problem. I think I, I know I figured out what the problem was and uh, I have fixed it. So you should be hearing me loud and clear. And I shouldn't have to fret and worry about my audio today. I might have to fret about the painting, I don't know. But uh, anyway, with that said, I'm going to um, move over to the easel now. And we will get ready to go with this and um, see how you like it. Um, I probably will take a break maybe uh, in an hour, hour and a half, depending on how the painting goes. If it goes faster than I expect, uh, I may not take a break at all. I may just keep painting. But uh, anyway, let's uh, go to the easel and uh, have my paints laid out for you. Um, and I have my sketch here on uh, tracing paper and I have my tracing paper over um, some graphite transfer paper, which you've seen me do this before probably. Um, so I put the tracing paper over the graphite paper and put the graphite paper over the canvas and uh, basically just trace it from the drawing I made on my tracing paper. So um, you can see how easily that goes. If you can get the drawing done well on your tracing paper, then uh, at least you have a, a good, good thing to start from. So let's uh, see if we can get going with this, get these sketches out of the way. And uh, there we go. Um, you notice one thing different today. Um, is the color of the background. Typically I have a gray gesso canvas. Today this is 11 by 14 canvas, same as usual. Um, but uh, I have tinted it with uh, a little bit of liquin, uh, which is a medium that uh, by Windsor and Newton and uh, it's a liquin original and uh, it does make uh, paint dry faster. So I tinted it the other day with uh, a little bit of uh, uh, Bob Ross's color dark sienna. It's really burnt sienna. And uh, so I let it dry for about 12 hours actually and then it gets a nice finished surface then I can just sketch on it. So I have a little bit different background. It's still a, a mid-tone. It's about a mid-value in terms of light to dark. If you see my light to dark scale over here, um, it's a little bit, um, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that. It's, it's about a mid-value, which is what we really want. And uh, so you probably can't even see that sketch on there now that I'm looking at the uh, monitor here. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see it and I'll back out and make sure you can watch me paint. So um, anyway, you see how it goes on. And uh, that's pretty much uh, a way, one way a lot of artists use sort of a, I don't know, a, a sort of a, Burnt, burnt sienna undertone in a lot of their paintings. Um, I've been using the gray for a long time, so I thought I would switch it up today and uh, see how this works. Okay, so that being said, I want to show you the paints. Uh, as I always uh, show you the palette and tell you what the colors are, um, this is my standard palette. I'm still using Bob Ross paints. I do have some uh, other paints I'm going to try in one of these paintings. I'm going to do a uh, uh, some M, um, some uh, <clears throat> gambling oil paints, and I'll try that for you one of these days. But today I'm going to use the uh, oil paints from Bob Ross. We have titanium white, uh, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, 
Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Lizard Crimson, Sap Green, Cadmium Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, Bright Red, and I add a little bit of Grumbacher's uh, uh, Ultramarine Violet. You see it's all spread out because it started running. I have my paints mounted on a, a gray glass here, a glass panel that uh, has a gray background on it, so it gives me again a mid-tone mid -tone value and uh, kind of helps me deal with the values. Um, the brushes we're using, I will uh, overlay a little uh, thing when I show it, when I put the video together, but basically I'm using some treckle brushes. Um, I have about three filberts here, a 16, a 10, and a number 6. I have about three flats, a 12, 4, and a 0. Um, I have my standard uh, Bob Ross palette knife I've, I use. I also have added some other palette knives. I've picked up a few other uh, uh, Master Touch palette knives that I may use some of these. I don't know if I'll use some of them or all of them or any of them, but I have them there. I still have a few Dick Blish Blick uh, brushes that uh, bristle brushes that are filberts. One's flat, a couple filberts. Um, and I also have then another, this is a watercolor brush. It's a Dick Blick uh, Golden Taclon watercolor brush. And it uh, basically is good for some of these architectural uh, corners where you want to have a sharp edge. Uh, it's really hard to get sharp edges with bristle brushes, but these Taclon nylon brushes uh, do a good job of that if you really want a sharp edge. I also have the little Bob Ross script liner that I may use in some places. So with that being said, you know the colors, you know the paints, um, and uh, I think we're going to get ready to go here. I want to put in my, put my palette over my um, painting here. I'm going to move it down to the bottom because we're going to start in the sky. And uh, I'm going to pick up my uh, big fil big filbert here, and uh, I'm going to put a little bit of medium on it. With uh, this is again liquid, and uh, just start with some a little bit of white and some a uh, little bit of this blue color here I have for some sky. Um, this the photograph didn't have a whole lot of. Uh, um, Sky in. I mean, it basically was a gray, gray sky. So I'm putting some white in, adding a little bit of uh, lavender with it, or violet. I'll, I'll use that term lavender and violet interchangeably all the time. I have trouble keeping up with me because I change what I call it. But uh, no uh, liquid white today. This surface is really smooth. When I put that uh, liquid on there, uh, it gave it a very smooth surface and it's pretty easy to paint over, pretty easy to uh, to get um, a lot of coverage with uh, small amounts of paint here. Um, go back get a little more blue maybe. Um, you see the color coming through. If you don't put on a lot of, a lot of paint um, you'll be picking up um, the, the sort of this reddish um, burnt sienna color here under underneath the uh, the white. You can see it sort of sticking out. It makes a nice uh, underpainting. And it's good for outdoor scenes. Uh, a lot of artists use it for when they're doing plein air painting. Uh, they'll cover their, their canvas with uh, this color and uh, as an underpainting. And just uh, let it flow here. And some clouds. Ooh, too much blue there. That phthalo blue is a potent color. It just sucks up everything around it. See that? Too much. Too much. So I'm going to just sort of thin it out a little bit. So I'm changing the color. I have a little bit different color over here on the on the left side than I have on the right. Um, painting around a few objects here in the, in the foreground. I just want to. Make sure I know where they are and don't uh, overpaint to the point where I can't see them. Oh, there's a man, I picked up a big mess there. All right, let's see if we can fade this in. This, these treckle brushes make a nice, um, soft 
blend on the on the painting surface. It's more white in here. Get some more paint. I want it thicker. It's not thick enough. Got some uh, mountains off in the distance. A little bit of this over here. See if I can change the color a little bit. That blue's a little bit too strong. All right, we can uh, always come back in and touch that up if we want. Um, one thing I did do, and I'm going to take it so I remember it, I'm going to take a little brush and put a little bit of that sky color right in here. I actually, it's too much uh, violet, right in here. I want to show the sky through this arch opening. And um, it takes a small brush to do that. I'm going to put it in so I don't forget it. Um, I made the scene a little more interesting by putting in this uh, um, little arch. The arch was there, but there was nothing behind it. So I put a little building and what looks like it might be a little fountain back there. So uh, when we get that, we'll be using a bit smaller brushes and uh, sort of representing that back there. Get in here into this eave. Pick up a little more of this paint. There's a uh, some mountains back there that I want to put in. Painting around this light that sticks up here. The mountains in next. Um, negative painting there. If you've followed me before, you know I do negative painting around a lot of items. It's a holdover from my oil or watercolor painting. Okay, put a couple clouds up in here like this. Fill it in. Maybe just a little bit of this black. The black will sort of turn gray when I put it, mix it with this white. Give a little bit of uh, shadow to some clouds. Again, I'm making this up because the sky in the photograph didn't have, wasn't, it was just all washed out, it was all white. That's one of the problems with photographs. If, uh, when you're painting from photographs, which I do a lot of, you have to learn how to uh, deal with them so they don't, you don't paint exactly what you see. Uh, and that's always a challenge. Okay, uh, that's enough of that. I'm going to come down now and uh, uh, put a little bit of canvas isn't very well covered right there. Okay. Um, pick up another brush, pick up a smaller brush, and we'll start working on these uh, mountains in the background. I think I'm going to take a uh, take this smaller filbert, and uh, we want these to be a little bit darker than the sky behind them or you won't see them so right in here I put in some mountains using a little bit of my uh, uh, violet and uh, some some black to, to uh, tone it down a little bit and uh, put these in. More paint, more paint, more paint. The thing I've been trying to do is use more paint. A canvas with this surface uh, requires more paint. 
and this mountain kind of sets in here. I think I've got too big a brush. Go back and get my little little, little one here, this uh, little flat, and pop it in right in here. Painting around this light fixture here. We have some more sky and uh, getting kind of detailed here with this small brush, but I want to make sure I leave this with the right background here. This is all a mountain back here in the distance. And they sort of are in, there's a big, like a bougainvillea or some sort of, I don't know if that's what it is, but there's a bush here that's uh, got a lot of flowers on it. We'll be bringing that in to color it up. Okay, and then over here that mountain continues. Um, so let's see if we can add a little different color to it maybe over there. Lighten up a little. I'm picking up some, a bit of browns. Not showing up that way, but we'll just pop it in here. I think the actual photograph actually had another building back there, but instead of uh, doing that, I'm just uh, putting the uh, mountain in that area. Okay, we got some, just a little bit of that in here. We're gonna paint over all of that. Um, it's the top of that roof. There's another building here. Okay. So, something that looks like maybe there's a mountain going on up over here. Let's do that and just sort of extend it off the page, off of the canvas. Run them together. Painting over a gesso painted canvas is uh, quite a bit different than painting over one that's got this uh, uh, liquid and uh, paint mixture on it because it's, uh, it's it's a little harder to cover actually okay so let's leave that right there for now and let's maybe start working on this building on the left side Now, um, this color of this building is actually sort of an off, off white, dirty white actually, and uh, I'm not really crazy about that color, so I'm going to uh, change it, make it a little more of a, an ochre, uh, pick up some of my yellow ochre here, and uh, mix some white with it. So I'm working on this building over here on the left. And we'll kind of come right in here and sort of put in I'm leaving the roof line alone right now, sort of painting just the building itself. Pick up a little lavender in there and we'll start Tone it down, change the color. Has to show a little bit, a little bit worn. You can't make it uh, look brand new. These aren't new buildings, that's for sure. So let's just see if we can get this in. A little more white, a little more ochre.
and uh, pick up some more my violet. Okay. Okay, and this actually has a another layer of paint over it, sort of a reddish brown that covers it. But we're gonna change that a little bit too, maybe. May make it reddish brown, but I may uh, change it. Okay, now this inside, this sort of goes in. There's like a step here and it uh, goes in. So we're gonna give it a little bit of a darker value, slightly darker. It's the same base color there, but we're gonna darken it just a little as we paint this area in here. Slightly in the shadow. Okay, what's that look like if we step back and take a look? Okay. And these steps are sort of a dirty white as well. Bit of a shadow on them there anyway and uh, sort of matches this shadow here okay okay um, it does have a little bit of a uh, sienna color over the top of it. It's like it's been painted. Um, let's see here, pick up a little of this just to make it white and dark sienna. Here there's a Bit of that color in there. Back goes back in here like this. And then it lost my line, but I think it's here. Something like that. All right, so it shows there is some little bit of a difference of paint. I think it's paint, but it uh, a bit darker here, maybe. All right, let's stop with that. Okay, now.
Okay, folks, if any of you have a question, uh, use the same protocol we've used before. If you want to uh, ask me something you would like me to answer, uh, type your question in in capital letters, and I will try to address that as a for the whole class to hear. Um, and uh, otherwise, I won't be recognizing it. Probably it's too hard to pay attention to that and paint and run the cameras and run the microphones, run the lights. Got to be my own technician here. See, this sort of goes up. I'm painting in this step that goes in here, sort of like this. And as it goes back, it gets a little bit more value, a little darker. There and here. And it's actually brighter on this side. Something like that. Looks a little bit like a step, I think. Okay, Get too much detail here it will be boring you to death. Um, there is a dark shadow that comes down right in here. I want to get that in. There we go. And it's sort of widens out at the top slightly. It sort of overruns. That area, okay. Hopefully that looks like a door opening with a couple of steps going up there. All right. Um, the only other thing left on this building is these is this roof and it has sort of a terracotta look to it um, which is let's see if I can figure out how to get that color here take some bright red some of my dark sienna maybe a little bit of a lizard pick up some white see if I can find that color it's close dark in there okay so this area here has got this so this terracotta roof on it got little bumps in it because it's uh, like clay tile roof if you will like that there's also underneath it it's a little bit of a overhang here that sticks out like that and then underneath it it's a little darker so I'm going to pick up a little more of my dark sienna and Van Dyke Brown come in here and put in a little shadow oh. under there a little darker maybe there and we can take that pick up a little bit of our black and just to make a shadow we have to pull some shadow down into this roof here or not roof into the side of the building where it sort of adds a little shadow here all right something like that sort of Take that out of the brush. Back and blend it together maybe with some of this yellowish color here. Oh, 
All right. <clears throat> Hopefully that's going to tell you what that is. Um, this little thing needs to go a little bit different angle slightly. Lighter. Whoa, too light. Okay, stop on that building. All right, we got the sky in, we got the mountain in, we got the building on the left side in. And I think I'm going to start walking across this arch back here. Start putting that in. And, uh, and then we'll work our way to the right and then we'll come back and finish the foreground. So that's my plan. Take a flat here, another number 12 treckle flat. And uh, I'm going to use some of the same color that I have here, even though it's going to be a little bit dirtier. And maybe just a tad of black in there to see if I can change the color a little bit. Um, but this I want to make sure that it's darker right here. And why is that? You ask. You didn't ask, you should ask. Why is it darker? I bet you know. It's to provide contrast so that it looks, you can tell that it's not part of the same building. If I made it the same value, same color, you'd think this was all one running together, and it's not. Okay. Throw some of this down in here. We have another contrast issue here with the, that building. So I want to make sure that I've got a little darker behind it so that when I paint the front of that building, it will show up. Okay, I'm getting some good mixtures of colors in here. Picking up that yellow, pulling it back in. Yep, some of this orangish color, maybe even have a little bit of that in there. Can't see that very well, but I have a roof here that's going to have to stand out. Okay. How's that looking? A few more dark things in here like this. Sort of play it right up to the top. All right, now the top of that's a little bit darker yet. It's got, uh, I'm going to put a little cap on it that looks a little darker. It's probably more moldy or something. Or, I don't know, but it's got to be darker than those mountains behind it or you won't see it. Either darker or lighter, one of the two. If I make it darker, you'll see it. It's there's a lot of stuff coming down here. All right. Does that look like a wall back there? And we can come back and fine tune that, put some details over the top of that if we want. Um, right now I'm going to just sort of leave it like that for now. Let's see if we can... Uh, come on, there we go. All right.
right. I have to remember where my pallet camera is, and it's right over here. So when I start painting in this area, I've got to move my pallet camera image feed or whatever you call it. Um, there's actually another little uh, wall back there in the back. I may just pop that thing in right now while I've got it, this in the brush. Right in here, there's a have more of the color than that. Okay. You may not know what that is, but I know what that is. And uh, put just a little bit of a shadow on it. Blend it very slightly. The brush. All right. Now, this arch is this uh, similar color to this roof up here. That's this terracotta type um, color. Let's see here. Maybe I can use this. It's probably about right. It's probably a little small, but I'm going to use this same. Alizarin, dark sienna, bright red, a bit of white, and sort of get this, get two or three values of this color here. And see if I can uh, get that painted in. Okay, right here, we're going to start right here. So this has a few lighter colors in it. This thing goes all the way down here. some more in over here. It's all pretty much one color. Maybe I'll darken up a little bit of it down here at the bottom. Okay, see if we can put in some darker spots. There's some areas here that sort of indicate the sort of some of the splits in the brick. Those shadows because they're not <clears throat> not all perfect. I'm not going to paint every one of them. If I painted every one of them, you wouldn't be able to use your imagination to figure that out. Now, this underneath is darker in here. It sort of starts with that color and starts fading into a lighter color. Pick up some more white. And more red in it.
and some dark colors here from the bottom up and some dark colors from the outside in Some nice blended colors there. Okay. I do have a few spots that are lighter, like there's some block in here that's sort of something like that. Um, this dark actually has to come down a little further. Right there. All right. Kind of small brushes today, folks, but um, this is a lot of material crammed into a 11 by 14 inch canvas. So when we do that, we have to try to get as much representation as possible. And sometimes that takes a small brush. Here on the top, I'm going to go back while I got this small brush and pop in some more darker pieces up here. They actually have some a bit of green in them. It looks like a little mossiness. I don't have any green on there yet, but uh, let's see what happens if I put just a touch of my sap green in there. Get a little bit of a olive color. Okay, we've got some of this mossiness that goes through here. Kind of comes down all the way over here, actually. All right, now, what's that look like from a distance? I think it looks better than the photograph. But I'm not trying to paint the photograph. I'm trying to use the photograph for reference. being creative with colors and values and that sort of th thing. Okay. Well, I've got this little bitty brush going here. I think I'm going to uh, go back and pick up my little building I created back there in the back. Um, some white and got some gray or midnight black a little ochre this little building back here okay I'll just leave that like that. I'm going to put a little balcony on it back there in a minute with the uh, fine rigger, but I'm going to leave it at that um, to just show you. Uh, there's another structure back there. So if I can get your eye to focus in here, this is the area where I want you to look. It's sort of the the uh, just about the one third area of the painting. So. The rule of thirds say if you can get the get the focal point or center of interest in one of those rule of thirds, um, it's usually more pleasing. It's one of those rules that you don't have to follow, but I think it's one that's worth following if you can. Okay, now we've got moving across to this building over here. I'm going to pick up my flat brush again. Actually, I'm going to get me a drink of water. 
excuse me. Okay, I'm checking my checking my chats here. Okay, um, getting a flat. Uh, we call it the number twelve, and we're gonna put this roof on here and the face of this building on here. If you notice my building, I don't know if you can see it. I've got a door drawn and a little window here that wasn't in the original. Uh, photograph either. It was pretty a bland photo and pretty boring actually. And uh, so I'll pick up some white and uh, a little bit of this reddish uh, color I have and see if I can start this roof down here. It's not light enough. I can't see it up there. So my brush strokes are going <clears throat> the way the roof, <clears throat> this is sort of a, a metal roof I believe. So I want my brush strokes to go that way. I don't want to have a tangent. Have you ever heard me talk about tangents? This wall comes like this and right now it looks like it's almost running into the top of this roof and then this runs into the top of this roof. Those are generally bad composition ideas. So let's see if we can extend this roof up just a little above both. Put a little highlight up there maybe and highlight it so that you know that's the roof coming down. Um, and just by moving that roof up like that I'm able to get rid of two tangents. So I can still define this wall of this building here and it won't be tangent to that. that well, otherwise they look like it all runs together. It looks like the wall runs into the roof into the building here and uh, that's not ideal. I know artists will tell you to break the rules, break the rules if you want, but you do that sort of at your peril. If you're trying to get a painting in a show or something, you might uh, not be accepted and you wonder why. And you may not really know why. You just don't know it's not accepted. But there are artist judges who look for things like that and look for design and composition rules that um, they would like you to abide by. So we're doing this more as a hobby anyway, so it's not a big deal, but there's a little piece of uh, roofing here. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow under it here. You didn't know it was there, but I just made it look like it's there. And then there's another piece of shadow down here under this piece of metal roofing, you know, making it very irregular. Even though their tendency might be to make that perfectly horizontal across there, resist the urge to do it that way. Okay. All right. Then, having done that, I can put in a couple of lines that, if I can get some paint on my brush, that look like there are sort of seams in the, this metal roof. 
All right, something like that. It's hard for you to see that, I'm sure, on the video. <clears throat> but up close, when I finish, I'll zoom in and let you look all around this painting and see what I've done <clears throat> in some of these areas. Um, all right, it's time to do the front of this building now. Let's sort of pick up our colors, maybe pick a little of this color we have in the sky, this uh, violet. <clears throat> see what happens here. Mm, I don't particularly like that. It's almost like the wall back there, which... Put some yellow in it. Yeah, that's a little better. Definitely make it stand out from this wall behind it. Leave room for the door. Step back, take a look. Starting to stand out. could put a person standing in that door, Scarpy. I thought about that. <clears throat> Certainly would bring more interest to the painting if you put a person in it. It also acts as a focal point and sometimes that would compete with my other focal point over here so I may not want to do that. Um, that would be the only reason I wouldn't do it is if, if the putting that in would cause the eye to go here to here to here to here. I, they wouldn't know where the focal point is. I'm going to have some nice uh, flowers up in this area. So maybe this whole area would kind of be a focal point. Um, again, when you're working with a, a photograph and you don't have anything in it to work with other than some building structures, which is all we have, kind of make this up as you go along. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to put a little purple in there at the bottom to sort of pull the uh, um, make it look like there's dirt or something on the bottom. There's going to always the bottom of these where they touch the ground there's always so just something like that. Okay. All right, there we go. Now, what should I do with that door? I'm going to go ahead and paint that door. It's got a little bit of a white cap over the top of it. I use my small small flat brush. This is a very small. Let's put this little top over it like that. Come down the side. Make it darker. Over there. All right, over here I got a window I'm going to put in. Make this window sort of somewhat abstract. A little bit of a dark shadow at the top. Maybe over here. All right, we'll start with that. If I want to come back and tune that up a little bit, I can.
Okay. Now, I think maybe I'll do this. There's a building on the right. A couple of buildings are kind of hooked together here. And then there's a like a brick wall that sort of came down. This is like a separation, like it used to be maybe a gate or something that kept people out. It's a little bit of eroded away. And I'm going to try to clean it up and make a little better looking gate out of it uh, without putting a gate in there. But let's do this building on the right over here. Let's get some some browns and some maybe make it just a little darker over here probably a little too dark so let's pick up a little white in there and as we come down we're just going to start adding white paint I just put some white paint on my brush and just went right back over where I just painted. It was like paint over paint. Didn't mix it on the palette, didn't mix it on the brush. I just sort of laid it on top. Okay, there's that back and pick up a little more of our color from the other side a little bit of this ochre and white over here I'm going to put a little red in that pick up some more white pull it down Oh, oh, I'm getting under my palette camera, aren't I? Haha, <laughs> just realized that. Sorry about that. That's what that blue tape right there means. I'm supposed to pay attention to that. some of that violet in there okay how are we doing on time well we've been going just about an hour so some of these darker colors and pull in okay then let's see we have up here we've got 
sort of another area. There's actually two two values going on there. One is this I get some more dark in there. Comes down here like this. Okay, so that's the side of the building. It's like a roof set down inside the building, a flat roof. And um, so the roof is flat there and then there's this uh, edge around the outside on the back. Okay, through a little of the, brought a little bit of this reddish color in over there. Took a little bit in the roof, got it over here. Got some of the purples over here. So in terms of balance, you want to try to uh, pull the colors from other parts of the painting if you can, if they make sense, and uh, put them in uh, whatever it is you're painting there. This, uh, this has a chimney type of brickwork or something over there on the top of it. It's sort of right in here. Let's see. In. Something like that. And then there's a other sort of a gray. Box like thing here wouldn't have to put those in, but they sort of help fill in that space over there. It's sort of boring without that. We'll put a little highlight on the top. Too much paint, probably. And right here we have a little highlight, maybe. And let's see. All right, so those look like little boxes. They might be chimneys, they might be opening from a stairwell, who knows. Uh, we got some brick up here. There's brick that's sort of and there's There's just some stuff on this walls that's probably left over from some paint or from another, maybe something stuck on the wall that gives it some flavor in here. We'll just sort of abstract it out. Okay. I could paint a thousand bricks in there if I wanted to take the time to do that. If I was a realistic painter and wanted to make it look like the photograph, but We'd be here till 8 o'clock tonight. You'd be bored. My streaming time would run out. So I don't think I want to do that. All right, so this, I'm going to look at this. Uh, there's a part of a brick wall here that's sort of um, fallen down a little bit. I'm going to try to spruce it up a little bit so it doesn't look quite so dilapidated. Um, but it's got like this terracotta brick in there. Pick up some white here. Come back and put in a few. Some more uh, dark sienna. It's 
So this is going to come here like this. And I have some bricks jutting out from it here like this. Um, a little bit of this gray-green color. Some of these. Something like that. Put a little more highlights in there. Some areas. Okay. Okay, that's part of the wall that sticks out there. Hopefully it looks a little bit like a wall. I think it does. I'm going to use those same colors if I can keep them here and move over to the other side and start putting in this I got a wall I want to put a wall here like this and Let's see like that area here's going to be darker it's definitely out of the light <clears throat> and we got some areas here that might be a little darker like every once in a while there'll be a, a dark shadow down on one of these steps these are not really steps they're like bricks that are sort of eroded <coughs> excuse me off of this brick wall that was here And let's go back and pick up some more of this greenish black color. A little bit too much. So it's sort of like a wall that's kind of been knocked down partially. Might have been very nice at one time. I'm not going to reconstruct everything. I'm just going to reconstruct parts of this. All right, sort of looking a little bit like that. It's got probably too much definition. Should make it a little more abstract. Maybe put a little highlight on top here to make sure we have separation from this wall behind it. I don't want it to look like it's part of that wall behind it or that. And we'll have a highlight out here. Okay, we're just getting in some brush strokes that look like we've got 
a little bit of a wall there. All right, <clears throat> now we've got a lot of canvas here that doesn't have anything on it. All this in here, I'm going to put in a light coat of white, whitish brownish, yellowish <laughs> almost looks like the building doesn't it? I don't think I like that. I want to change that color. I didn't change it yet. more white. Let's go back in here. We're going to come back. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I'm going to have another drink of water. Okay, we've got a little bit of a dirt like covering. We may have to go back and restate some of these. I don't know. I'm getting under the. Uh, I'm sorry again, folks. I am just painted right underneath the palette camera. <clears throat> I do have another camera over there that's sort of focused on the palette. I might be able to <clears throat> overlay that when I put the final edited video together. I usually look for something like that to make sure I'm not cutting you out of the scene here, cutting you out of what's on the palette. Put some darks in there, get some dark in this corner down a little bit. back here, some darks back here, it's really a walking path instead of a path for a car. Pick up some more whites. going to be darker because it's really in the shadow here. Making fast progress now once we start on this walkway here, walking path. Mm-hmm. some of the darks and pull them up in here. I actually want some of that to come up into this building here. Let's 
see if I can highlight around this part of the wall. <clears throat> All right, Let's see if we can put a few more. A lot of the canvas covered, most of it covered, a few small spots. All right. <clears throat> Uh, this thing here is bothering me. It's too too bright. I wanted it to look like a little bit of a highlight on on this brick wall here, but it's taking over. A bit better, or maybe a little bit darker. This dark right in here and over here. This should be really good and dark. And we could even make it come out into here even more. This way more. Could have a little bit of a some dark shadows over here. I like this. If you want to make things look like they're three dimensional, you give them shadows. It's probably too much, but. Start with that, come back with my big brush. And okay. Now when you stand back and look at it, <clears throat> your eye goes to the really to the lightest light. <clears throat> and if you're looking at it with me right now, you see what the lightest light is. It's those two white steps there. So, I gotta tone those down a little bit. Otherwise, it'll be pulling your eye right, right to those steps. Get some of my brushes cleaned out here. Preserve as much as I can, but I want to tone it down just a little. There, that's a little better. Okay, um, got this big bush up here. It's got a lot of red flowers in it. <clears throat> And we've got a couple of light um, lights to put in here, and then decide what we want to do with that door. This is still not very well defined here. Yeah, 
looks a little more like a sort of a stair step type. All right. Okay, I think it's time to get that little rigger out and see if I can uh, get him going. Put in some of these fine, fine tuned things here. Um, rigger, I usually get a lot of uh, thinner on it and make it sort of runny as much as possible. My Midnight Black and Dark Van Dyke Brown. Okay. Am I under the... I can't believe I did that again. Gee, man, hey, Christmas. <clears throat> so I started up here with this little black brush. Started painting. It's a little, uh, just a light hanging off the side of the building <clears throat> here. Comes out like this. Got some things on it to hold it up. Okay. There's another one over here. It's totally gone from the sketch, but it's sort of a something like this sticking out. See, I've got some raw canvas back there I've got to cover in behind this light. I didn't paint that in very well, but I'll do it now. Put the mountain back in and even put in a little bit of this uh, sky color maybe. Back there, around it, right there and here. Okay, make sure that's dark enough. That looks like the base could be at least these. Curvatures. Hold it up. It's got to be stable enough. Okay. Um, another small item to paint that's in the background here. It's this little 
um, fountain sitting back here in the back. You probably can't even see that. Right here, I'm going to make a A red fountain. Get me some more dark and black here. Black and dark sand or uh, Van Dyke brown. Put me a little balcony right here in this house. Something like that. <clears throat> We're going to have a, a bit of a fountain sticking up here, so I'm going to put a little bit of a Thing like that. Slight shadow over there. Outline it. It's hard to tell what that is, but I think the eye can fill it in. All right, this uh, big bush up here that's got all the some dark green in it. Try to use my black and uh, sap green and we're just going to sort of come in here and sort of put in some some of this green greenery that comes down here midnight black sap green when i gray it down i'll put a little alizarin in it so it's not quite so bright but i'm going to be putting in some bright flowers on top of it here all these places I'm leaving holes is going to be sort of flowers. Make some large clumps, make some small clumps. Um, big bush don't want to make it perfectly round okay there's a couple of these that sort of just sort of stick out. And I have little flowers on them. Very light, just very lightly touching. Okay, let's see here. Something like that. Mm. Now I'll come back and get some white and some alizarin. A lot of white, a little bit of alizarin. A nice little ma magenta color here. And I'm going to get some white and some just bright red. We have a couple of a couple of values of red and a couple and so I'm gonna come in here and start popping in these. Just letting whatever comes off the brush come off the brush. Uh, change the color up, put a little bit of uh, I call it magenta, it's really now um, Alizarin and white, but they're mostly pink or sort of dark red. So I'm bright brightening these up quite a bit from what they are in the photograph, if uh, you're able to tell that. I don't know.
makes them come down over overlap this building and on the roof all right step back that looks almost like a perfect circle which I don't really want I want it to be more abstract than that Okay, let's see here. So, how are we going to make it more abstract? Push that side out. We're going to pull some of this down. Dark enough. So I'm just sort of letting what rolls off the brush. Like that. Clean the brush out. Come back and get some more of this bright red and white. Just dot it. Just touch it. Okay, it's getting less rounded and more abstract. Um, there's actually a couple of leafy green things that sort of kind of hang out over here somewhere. I don't know. It's hard to tell exactly what they are, but I'm going to put a few little things that sort of look like a plant of some sort. Put a flower or two on them maybe. Like that. So the most details right in there, so that's where you're probably going to want to look. I think this door here, I'm going to just sort of darken it in. Try to put a person in there, I'll probably screw it up. It'll be darker than that back in there, it's got to be really dark actually. Okay, what am I forgetting? Let's see. Actually, I could put a few of these. I think I'm going to pull that greenery. I'll pull it down and put some more. It's not in a photograph, but I'm going to sort of clean it, put some of that in here and sort of brighten this little corner up. Add a pull it around the bottom of this. I'll just throw some things that look like flowers in here. Dark green. Help me sort of define this a little better. Okay, so that's the under part of it. Go back and get some of this bright red and uh, something like this. Change the color, pick up a little magenta or alizarin. Those flowers, if they're the kind of what I think they are, they sort of climb all over everything. So I got a here and here, um, got a few over there. Papa bear, mama bear, baby bear. Anybody heard that term before? Elements of three, make them three different sizes. Um, I think that's. I want to do here. Looks like it's an inviting scene. You'd want to walk back in there and see what's going on, I think. Um, 
See if I can put one more definition in this brick here. My under my, almost under my. Come on, there we go. Let's put in a few more colors here to sort of break up this area so it's not just all one big mass. I think this has to really look more like a shadow from this building. Okay. What else can I do to this? I think I'm about done for here. Any suggestions quickly? All right. Um, I think I'm going to put my name on it. Uh, I see a spot that sort of looks unfinished. Now these, I put these um, flowers in, but they look like they're sort of glued on. So let's unglue them and put a little bit of ground under them here. Even maybe make a little shadow out of it over here. Sort of blend it out, blend it in. So once you do that, it sort of gives it the uh, appearance that it's not just an afterthought, not just glued on. They're really set down in the ground. They're part of the landscape. Now, one more look. I want to look at those steps again and see if they're too obvious. I don't think so. It sort of pulls my eye there. When I look at this, my eye sort of goes here. I look at this. I move into here, up here, around to there, and back. So the idea is to try to move the eye through the painting, have some depth in the painting, have some interesting foreground features, and, uh, and pretty much that's it. There actually, there's uh, there's little rocky stuff around here. I'm not, I'm not going to try to paint a bunch of rocks, but uh, there's just little things that look that make it look like it's sort of a rough street. And uh, I could spend a lot more time on this, but I think I've probably about bored you to death. Hopefully not, but. Um, I'm going to sign this job and I think I'm going to call it finished. Um, we get my darker colors here on a lot of liquid, uh, or a lot of thinner on my brush. A lot here and come up here and right in this area and block print my name. Come on, give me some paint here. There. Too close, okay. All right, I think I'm going to stop and I'm going to take off my palette camera and I'm going to zoom in on this little job and let you see it and uh, move it around a little bit. I've got a couple controllers here I can do that with. Um, start here and... Okay, just check the top out here. So I hope it looks a little better than the photograph. Certainly has a little more depth by putting that uh, those other uh, structures back there in the back. Go back. Center it up. Okay. I think. 
think I'm going to say uh, thank you for watching once again. Thanks for tuning in to this live uh, demonstration. I hope you like it. I hope you give it a try. And uh, be ready to come in and join me next uh, month, third Wednesday, same time, 1 o'clock uh, till about 3 or 4. And uh, we'll do another oil painting together. And I hope you uh, tell your friends and share your videos and uh, have other people watch me. I'd really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Goodbye. <music>